Hello, this is Morel Bernard. Welcome to British Life. That's life. Oh, that's life. What all the people say. You're riding high in April. Shut down in May. That's life. I'm taking a look at British life in 1889. Reporting on the Cleveland Street scandal and the hypocrisy of Victorian society. Cleveland Street, Tottenham Court Road, London, is in London's West End. In 1889, Cleveland Street, there was a scandal in which a male brothel was raided. What did I say? (laughs) My little friend here will go... What did you say? (laughs) Yes, I will repeat it. And that is in 1889, Cleveland Street, there was a scandal in which a male brothel was raided. And you are listening to British Life with me, Morel Bernard. At the time, sexual acts between men were illegal in Britain. And those who visited the house on Cleveland Street faced prosecution. However, due to the high social standing of many of the clientele of 19 Cleveland Street, only a few men faced prison time. The British government were accused of covering up the scandal in order to protect members of the establishment. Restrictions were placed on British press in respect of reporting the scandal. At the time of 1889, we need to note that homosexuality was demonised by the press and characterised as an aristocratic vice The scandal of Cleveland Street highlighted the hypocrisy that was embedded at the heart of Victorian society. The uncovering of the male brothel in Cleveland Street occurred in the summer of 1889, but it was not until the winter of that year that news of the scandal reached the press. And it is interesting to note that one of the first mentions of the incident was reported not in England, no, but in New Zealand in the Lytterton Times Press, which carried tidings of the society scandal. It was described as a horrible scandal in connection with a private London West End Club. The report went on to say that 98 members in all were implicated. 31 warrants had been issued but would not be executed on the understanding that the persons connected with it leave the United Kingdom. Furthermore, The report alluded to several men of high standing being involved in the scandal and that the British press was silent on the matter. So that was reported by the New Zealand Lytterton Times Press. In respect of the men of high standing, the list of offenders featured future dukes, the sons of dukes, peers, financiers, many honourable persons and several officers of the Imperial Army. And it was reported that some of the officers had suddenly resigned their commissions and that offenders had fled The New Zealand newspaper stated that the British press had suppressed reference to the scandal, 
but there was no doubt of the incident having taken place. Now, a few days later, after the revelations in the New Zealand press news of the West End scandal, it made it to the pages of British newspapers. However, the particulars of the events were patchy, or we could say sketchy, surrounded by rumours and innuendos. One report from the Bradford Daily Telegraph stated the following, it says, We hear on good authority that two men of social standing had been arrested by Inspector Abilene in connection with the unspeakable scandal in the West End. They have not been brought before the magistrates in public. But as Inspector Abilene was in the magistrate's private room on Tuesday, and several of the boy witnesses in the case were seen in the precincts of the court, it is suggested that the case may have been heard in private. The Cleveland Street scandal was also reported as far as the, well, say the Americas, Caribbean, the Belize's colonial guardian reported that a police investigation was mounted into the activities at Cleveland Street and that six sittings had been held in camera at the Marlborough Street Court in London to inquire into abominable charges made against members of the West End Club. The Belize paper reported how the scandal was said to involve an eminent liberal politician, an officer of the royal household, and several peers. The Cleveland Street scandal highlighted the gulf between the rich and the poor. Public feelings were that those accused of what was then a crime could get away with it because they were wealthy and powerful. The newspapers were afraid to print the story and to name those who were implicated, since, of course, they were men of high standing in English society, the men being wealthy and powerful, and the newspapers fearing libel charges. Someone, or we could say some people, did, however, however, print some pamphlets about the Cleveland Street scandal. And these pamphlets began to do the rounds across Britain. On 6th December, thereabout, in 1889, of course, the Sheffield Independent newspaper described how there is scattered broadcasting in London of a statement professing to give the truth about the great scandal and certainly stating the facts which are common talk in greater detail and with far more circumstance than before as this is being sold so rapidly in the streets these are talking about the pamphlets yeah but the pamphlets are being sold so rapidly in the streets that by nightfall, double and evil treble the price was demanded for a copy. It affords yet another illustration of the mischief that has been caused by attempts to hush up the affair. The news report went on to say that, owing to the public feeling in the matter, It is believed that the 
police will be compelled to prosecute those implicated in the West End scandal. My dear listeners of this podcast, British Life, you may be wondering what happened in the end. Well, in the end, a scandal died down, as I guess so many scandals in life do eventually die down. A reporter was found guilty of libel in January 1890, and this effectively clearing a eminent lord of high standing reputation. However, the damage to the lord was done. Newspapers continued to reinforce in the public's mind that the alleged activities that took place at Cleveland Street was a dangerous and aristocratic vice, something that should be discouraged. In other words, the newspaper, yes, how would say, disseminating more information and um, encouraging people not to take up the activities that the aristocrats seem to be indulging in. Oh, yes, you have been listening to British Life. Oh, that's life. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say here. You know, you're riding high in April and maybe shot down in May. (laughs) It says, I've been a puppet, a pirate, a poet. Whoa. A pawn and a king, a pawn and a queen. I've been up and down and over and out. Mm. And I know one thing. And each time I find myself flat on my face, flat on my face, what do I do? I pick myself up and get back in the race. (laughs) Enough of that. That's life, British life with me, Morel Bernard. I look forward to seeing you soon for more British life. So see you soon. Please join me for the next podcast of British life. I'll see you then. Morel Bernard saying, take care for now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.